We're interested in learning how plants work. We want to understand how the genetics of a plant interacts with the environment to produce what are called phenotypes. The entire collection of traits and properties that comprise a plant. A typical experiment would be to collect hundreds of varieties, take very careful measurements, and do the test to see how well they all respond to drought. Incredibly useful information because that can be translated into crop plants very easily. The interesting thing is that evolution has already given us so much to work with. We want to try to grow crops in a more arid environment. Evolution has tomatoes that are adapted to a desert environment. Ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to put a number on the entirety of what a plant is. And the only way you get at that question is measuring more and more and, and finding out the structure of, of how a plant is created. For example, if you look at uh, fluorescence, you can gauge how stressed a plant is uh, by looking at the stress on its photosystems that absorb light um, and get a measure of how well it's photosynthesizing. And then just knowing the overall morphological parameters of, of how fast does a plant respond to drought, how quickly does it stop its growth. All of these are, are highly informative um, in trying to figure out how a plant is adapted to different environments. You can also look at near-infrared wavelengths, and this gives you a, a better understanding of the water content of a plant and its overall water status. After the imaging loop, the plants go back into the growth environment where they're weighed and watered and fertilized. The next day, cycle repeats, and that happens for three, four, five weeks. Being able to control the environment in careful experimental conditions allows us to understand the impact of a changing environment and when we talk about crop plants that will be incredibly important as we move through the 21st century.